Hi there, it's Tamara Doris, and today we're going to talk about problems versus solutions and what tends to get most in the way. And this is going to be kind of a, um, a metaphysical way to look at things. And if you really grasp what I'm talking about, I think it can make a huge difference in your life. So you ready? Here we go. Let's say this is your problem right here. And this is your solution. Okay? So it's a continuum. Problem, solution. Now, one of the things we know, and we know this from the metaphysical arena, um, where attention goes, energy flows, what you focus on expands. Most of the time, what happens when we have a problem is that we focus on the problem. That just seems to make good sense, right? Something's wrong, got to fix it. Let's see. Let's look at it. Let's look at it some more. Let's take a magnifying glass and look at it. Let's tell all our friends about it. Let's join a Facebook group. I need to chat about this. Who am I going to vent to? I got this problem. Do I need to tell you that that's not going to fix it? Ah, you say, but Tamara, I can't stick my head in the sand. I've got this problem. Don't you see this problem? This is a real problem. Look at it. I can turn it around. I can see it. I look at my bank balance, my situation. It's real. This is a problem. Nobody can deny it. Okay, so you have a problem. One of the things that is just essential in the work that I teach and that I do and the healing that I hope, you know, most of us are on the healing journey of is about recognizing that it's more than just here's your problem. How do I fix it? First of all, when we have a problem, that problem gives us a physical, emotional, energetic, psychological kick, right? I always say triggers are treasures. Well, when you get triggered because of a problem, here's a problem, hasn't gone anywhere. You get triggered because of it. Your central nervous system goes into overdrive. Your amygdala, your brain stem uh, has an, two amygdalas, one on each hemisphere. Your brain stem sends this alert of danger, danger to your whole body. So now your central nervous system is in fight or flight. When we're in fight or flight, our prefrontal cortex, this is where we solve problems, our prefrontal cortex is reduced by up to 80%. 80%. Now, Albert Einstein said, you cannot solve a problem on the same level of mind that created it. It is one of the most brilliant... Sorry, I have a new listing and my phone's blowing up. Good problem, right? It is one of the most brilliant sayings that he said, and he had several really good sayings. But it's the truth, right? We, we, we have a problem here. Whether we want to admit it or not, whether you like it or not, I don't care. There was a certain level of mind that caused this problem. Or, better put, a certain level of energy, a certain quality or lack of quality that created this problem. So, you sitting here looking at the problem from the same level of mind, the same perspective, the same energy, is only going to grow the problem. You know, this is how wars are started. This is how divorces come to be. This is how we get so divided as a world, as a country, as a city, as a town, whatever, is because we're focused on the problem. That is not intelligent. It's not wise. First thing we have to do when we have a problem is we have to bring our central nervous system back into equanimity 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 we have to we have to calm down you know when someone says count to 10 take a deep breath that is not the worst advice i have ever heard because there's wisdom to it in that we can't accomplish anything worthwhile if we're all freaking freaked out we just can't our it's a scientific fact that our brain compresses our, our blood flow is not getting through lots of stuff goes on However, I want to go a little bit deeper with this. That trigger, because of the problem, is going to bring up an old wound. Maybe it's a story that says, this always happens. You never get ahead. Why does this always happen to you? You're not good enough for that. You don't deserve this. Okay? It's not just you. This is everyone. When we have a problem and we get triggered by that problem, we tend to to bring up our wounds, we tend to go to that, that unconscious, unmet needs, and they come up. We may not consciously recognize that when this happened, this problem happened, that my mind went to, I'm not good enough. Consciously, I may not be aware of it. 
So what am I going to be conscious of? This is important. I'm going to be conscious of the feelings that I'm feeling when I look at this problem. I want to make sure you got that. I'm going to be conscious, meaning I'm going to be aware of the feelings I get when I realize this problem. It might be hard to breathe. It might be freaking out. It might be, I want to yell and scream. I might want to cry. But whatever the physical feelings are, when I have physical feelings amidst, amidst a problem, among a problem, that means that there's something inside there that it's stirring up. Some story from way back when. And it probably has to do with my wounded self, myself that says you're not good enough or whatever it is. And by the way, not being worthy is like the number one most common, the most common self-limiting belief that people have, even if they don't know they have it. Okay, just so you know. So if that's the case, and now I have this physical component, if you will, to this problem, because that's my reaction, how likely am I, am I going to be to solve it if I'm sitting here looking at it? It's next to impossible. How likely is it that I'm going to spin out, spend all day worrying about it, stay up all night long worrying about it, trying to come up with my logical brain that, remember, is, is minimized, trying to come up with all these ideas and solutions when I'm still in the energy of the problem? It's bad. It's bad news. We don't want to do that. So what we know, what I teach, what is so instrumental in my work is that because everyone wants to manifest. People are like, yeah, let me sign me up. I want to manifest. Let me read your new book. But they've missed this part or they ignore this part or they pretend it's not there. I don't know. But I'm here to tell you as someone who's been writing, researching, teaching, coaching, applying this stuff for the last 25 years and longer, I can tell you that this is the missing piece. It is the missing piece. And it has to do with our central nervous system. And it has to do with the fact that we go into fight or flight and we spend way too much of our time there. And nothing good is manifested from there. You cannot manifest more than a migraine or a parking ticket when you are trying to manifest in that state. Because your energy is flowing. And the faster your energy flows, the faster it hits with its target. So in other words, angry energy moves just as fast as positive energy. So if I'm really upset and I'm raging and I'm frustrated, my energy, even though it's low on the vibrational scale, it's a low, dense, dark energy, it's still moving like a mother. It's still go plowing. So that's why when we get angry and we get reactive and we, we hit send before we should have hit send or we say something that we blurted out that we shouldn't about how you're just like your mother or whatever it is, when that happens, it hits hard. It hits really hard. So that's why, I mean, if those aren't reasons enough, I don't know what is. But, but the fact that our energy is moving really fast and hard in a negative way, you're not going to manifest good things. But when you get this, what we're talking about in this video, and you apply it, you're going to notice a huge difference. And you're going to be privy to what the missing piece in manifestation is. Okay? So when you get this problem, we know that we're not going to solve it on the same, with the same level of thinking that created the problem, right? So our goal then is to get over here on the continuum to neutral. Over here, the problem solved. Here, it's beautiful. This is our end result that we want. Everyone's happy. You're abundant. Life is good. Flowers, rainbows, unicorns, whole nine yards. But it's a journey. We can't just go from problem to beautiful outcome. So we have this in, in between. If I had another hand, I could put them all three here and show problem, neutral, solution. So I like to call this middle one the non-problem. It's, it's just neutral. It's like, I'm not worried about the problem. I'm not thinking about the future. And oftentimes, especially when I coach real estate agents, I'll ask them to get to the non-problem or I'll help them get to the non-problem. Because sometimes, and this goes for most of us, when we're in the, the energy of the problem, it's impossible to be in the energy of the end result. And just to be clear, the energy of the end result is what we want. It's what we all want. It's just that most manifestation teachings do not have you stop at the neutral. They do not even have, they do not even tell you there is a neutral. But if we miss the neutral spot, 
if we don't just focus on getting ourselves calmed down and away from the problem, this is not going to happen. A and I speak the truth because look how many millions and millions and millions of people have tried to manifest and not gotten the results they want. Millions. Okay. And then ones who, who read a book and manifest a mate or a million dollars, there's nothing wrong with you that you didn't do that. It's just that they, A, either had the ability to get neutral and then joyful, or B, didn't have the trauma to begin with. Does that make sense? Like if you're someone who doesn't have suppressed emotions, who never had any kind of trauma, big T or little t, you just never had trauma, like you had a great life and you just worked out all your shit and it's not a big deal then you may be able to to graduate but i'm telling you especially with women who i tend to work with more um and some aware men but i'm telling you that you you have to get out of the problem energy okay and we do this i have a technique a form of eft it's eft and grounding combined um, i do a couple different things with eft i do traditional eft but this is one that I teach my clients and I, I just started actually teaching my clients this because it is so helpful at getting the emotions out. You know, we think we should suppress our emotions. We think we need to stuff them down with a bag of cool ranch, Dor cool ranch Doritos and the latest Netflix. But that's just staying in the problem energy. It's staying there. It's stuffing it down, stuffing it down. And pretty soon like a like a bag of Doritos that have been on an airplane, they're going to just go pop, right? That's, you know, when they get all full of air. That's what we're looking at when we, when we stay in the problem and we just stuff it down. And then I don't have to tell you that after a number of years of stuffing emotions down, eventually they are going to come up whether you like it or not. They're going to come up at the worst time in your life where you're going to ruin a relationship or they're going to pop up in a little tumor, right? Or a chronic condition or a heart attack. So those suppressed emotions, you're not fooling anyone, including your body is the point. You know, I went years thinking I could suppress my feelings and then it came out in a, in a very debilitating disease. You can't do it. You can't, you can fool a lot of people a lot of the time, but you can't fool your body because it knows more than you because it's your, it's your spirit's wisdom, right? Your body knows. It'll say, nope, sorry, you're going to get cancer because you're not paying attention. So we have to be very cognizant about this. So we do, we feel the, we see the problem, we feel the anger or the frustration or the sadness, sorrow, loss, whatever, and we tap, bringing it out, we bring it out, we bring it out, we get grounded, we feel, we feel that, uh, that security, that breath work where we know we're okay. And I'm not trying to keep that process from you. I'm just not going to do it in this video, but I will do it in a future video. Okay. Really soon, maybe in the next week. But for right now, I just really want you to understand the process because it's a good launching pad and anybody can tap. You know, you, you can feel angry and you can just start tapping when you get calmed down. That's when you're in the neutral. OK, I call it also catch and release. When you have a problem, you feel reactive, you feel emotional, you're triggered. Calm down, whatever you have to do to calm down, dance it off, EFT, whatever. Then you're in a neutral position. Now from the neutral position, let's focus on the end result. Not thinking from the problem, thinking from a neutral position. What do I want to come? What do I want to happen? Like if you're in real estate, possibly, and you have a deal fall out and you're so upset. I mean, you were going to get a, you know, a $20,000 commission and it just fell all apart. If you're sitting there thinking about that lost money and how upset your clients are and how upset you are and how you didn't do anything wrong and what that other agent said. You are staying in the energy of the problem itself. Make sense? And so that's, we're back to square one. So we're going to look at it. We're going to say, okay, let me get the emotions out. Let me, let me tap it out. Let me get where I'm feeling really safe and secure, at least neutral. Now, what would I like the outcome to be? We call this stepping into the end result. What would I like the outcome to be? Well, I'd like to get into another transaction and I'd like to have it go really well and I'd like to make a lot of money. Okay. And what would be a representation, uh, an image representation of that? 
And you may say, well, I see myself handing my buyer the new the keys to a new house. And you imagine that. And then I say, well, how does that feel? And you say, it feels pretty good. You say, can you get in the, in the, in the energy of that? Can you feel that end result? And you say, yeah. And we'll sit with that for a minute. What does it feel like? How good does it feel? It feels really good. Remember, we went from problem to neutral to end result. And once that end result is feeling good enough where in your whole body, you can feel it and you're happy and you know when you're there because you're not worried about the problem anymore. You're focused on this beautiful outcome. Now, from that place, you stop and you say, okay, so what should my next move be? It's that simple. You don't need to mind map. You don't need to put a poster board on the wall. You don't need to call 50 friends or have a chat group about it. All you've got to do is get into the end result of the, the result that you want. Get in the end emotion. What is it? The end result. What do I want? What do I want? How does that feel? Can I feel that now? Can I just feel it now? Am I able to feel it now? Yeah, I can feel it now. Now, from that place. So what's my next step? It's all you got to ask yourself. And you're not asking your conscious self because that's still at a level lower than what we want. I want you to ask your higher self, your, you know, your soul, your intuition. And when you are in a relaxed, joyful, end result state, it's like this door before in the problem state, your brain was like this. When you're in the end result of joy, it's like this door just opens wide open. And now there's a funnel above your head from right from your higher self coming straight to you. And you'll be like, maybe, okay, I just need to suck this one up, but we're going to get into a new contract. Or it could be, oh, wow, I didn't even think about offering that. Or it could be, this was a good learning experience. I have to really teach myself what I got out of this. I'm going to do some journaling, but I'm not going to make the mistake again. And I see a brighter future. Doesn't matter. The point is, now you're at the solution stage. Do you get that? Problem, solution. And in between, there's neutral and there's the end result. We want to see the end result and then we get the solution out of it. So we don't have to come up. We don't have to brainstorm. We don't have to think, what should I do about this? You don't have to talk to friends about it. You don't have to complain to your pets. You just have to follow the process. It's way more streamlined than maybe what I'm making it sound like. And once you get it, you always have it. And it always works. It never not works. Does that make sense? It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I, I hope that you'll give it a try. Like I said, I will do, we'll go through a session. Um, I need someone to to give me to give me a comment or a chat or a private message on a problem, and I'll I'll leave you anonymous. I'll leave you anonymous, and then we'll work through it. I won't say your name, I won't say any names, but we'll do we'll do a problem solution end result or problem neutral end result solution, so you can see how it works. Because it's really a, a it's very it's the most elegant psychology and problem solving and and manifestation tool that you know you would think after 30 years i would come up with something good so i am and i did and so i think you should use it i think you should give it a try just remember if you remember nothing else you cannot solve a problem the same level of mind same level of energy that created it okay hope you enjoyed this thanks for watching with a little bit over time but hopefully it was worth it and talk to you soon have a beautiful